Hello and welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanzi Banauri. In today's bulletin, we will present top and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines of the day. Amtrak train with 198 passengers derails after hitting a truck on the tracks in Southern California. U.S. top court bans colleges from considering raise in admissions. Biden is wrapping a campaign fundraising blitz aimed at making a bold early statement. Pence makes a surprise trip to Ukraine and meets with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Ex-GOP Ohio House Speaker sentenced to 20 years for role in 60 million bribery scheme. Police release video of officer killing a neo-Nazi gunman and ending a mass shooting at a Texas mall. Connecticut lawmaker is attacked after attending Muslim prayer service. Older Americans can get RSV vaccine this fall after consulting their doctor, CDC says. Christine King Ferris, the last living sibling of Martin Luther King Jr., dies at 95. Madonna postpones upcoming celebration tour due to serious bacterial infection. Canada and allies taking Iran to ICJ over downed PS752 flight. Shooting outside US consulate in Saudi Arabia leaves two dead. France sends tens of thousands of police to head off unrest after deadly police shooting of teenager. Turkish president condemns Quran burning in Sweden, signals it will obstruct NATO membership. Yankees Domingo German throws first perfect game since 2012. And NFL suspends three players indefinitely for violating the gambling policy of fourth gate six games. You were listening to headlines, now news in detail. An Amtrak train carrying nearly 200 passengers struck a county water truck and derailed on Wednesday in Southern California, critically injuring the truck's driver, authorities said. Three of the train's seven cars went off the tracks following the collision in Moore Park, said Ventura County Fire Department Captain Brian Magra. The derailed train cars remained upright on tracks adjacent to an orchard and bare sections of land. Fourteen people on the train were taken to hospitals with minor injuries, while the truck driver was taken to a trauma center with a head injury, Magra said. Parts of the demolished Ventura County Public Works truck were scattered all around the derailed train cars. Magra initially said the truck's driver was believed to have gotten out of the vehicle before the crash, but later clarified that the circumstances leading up to the wreck weren't known. No one's talked to him, so the whole situation is still being investigated, he said. Most of the passengers were able to get off the train cars on their own or with the aid of first responders, Magra said. TV news helicopters showed numerous people, many carrying luggage, milling about in a field as firefighters worked the scene. The train was on its way to Los Angeles from Seattle when it struck a water truck obstructing the tracks at 11.15 a.m., Amtrak said in a statement. The United States Supreme Court has ruled that colleges must stop considering race as a factor 
in the readmission policies, dealing a setback to so-called affirmative action efforts aimed at boosting the enrollment of black and Latino students at top universities. The top court's decision on Thursday came in response to lawsuits that challenged the policies of Harvard University and the University of North Carolina by claiming race-conscious student admissions programs discriminate against white and Asian American applicants. The ruling is the latest by the conservative-dominated court to advance right-wing political causes, and it could have significant implications for U.S. college enrollment and diversity on campuses across the country. President Joe Biden decried the court's decision on Thursday, calling on universities to continue to advance diversity in spite of the ruling. By considering race-related factors like adversity, I have always believed that the promise of America is big enough for everyone to succeed and that every generation of Americans we have benefited by opening the doors of opportunity just a little bit wider to include those who have been left behind, Biden told reporters. He stressed that the top court balked precedents previous rulings that established legal norms in its decision on Thursday. We cannot let this decision be the last word on it, Biden said. Asked whether the Supreme Court is rogue, Biden said it is not a normal court. The top court ultimately found affirmative action to be in violation of U.S. Constitution provisions that establish equal protection under the law. President Joe Biden has called it up to high-dollar donors at Upper East Side penthouses in New York and on West Coast decks in recent weeks. He has two more fundraisers in Manhattan on Thursday that will close out an end-of-quarter campaign blitz that his team believes will put him on a strong financial footing for a 2024 White House contest expected to set spending records. The pair of evening events will be Biden's ninth and 10th fundraising receptions of the past two weeks, numbers matched by Vice President Kamala Harris, First Lady Jill Biden, and Second Gentleman Doug Emhoff. The Biden campaign has been mom before the July 15 reporting date about how much he has raised at the often freewheeling gatherings, but is confident about the size. The president is also marshalling the whole of the Democratic Party to dial for dollars, enlisting help from governments. Gavin Newsom of California and J.B. Pritzker of Illinois, as well as former President Barack Obama, among others. Obama is being featured in a new campaign video meant to encourage small-dollar online donations before Friday's donation deadline. Biden allies insist that despite polls showing lagging enthusiasm among the Democratic base for the 80-year-old president, his party is solidly behind him. Former Vice President Mike Pence made a surprise visit to Ukraine on Thursday, meeting with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and touring the war-torn country as it fights Russian aggression. Pence, who this month launched his campaign for the Republican nomination for president, has been deeply critical of Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. He has called on the U.S. to deliver more military aid to the country and criticized GOP rivals who have questioned the ongoing U.S. involvement, saying there is no room in the party for Putin apologists and pushing back against those who want the U.S. to take on a more limited role on the world stage. Pence spent roughly 12 hours in the country Thursday, according to an advisor, with stops in Moshun, Buka, and Irpin, according to NBC News, which traveled with him. In addition to his meeting with Zelensky, Pence received multiple briefings, including one from Ukrainian officials on the country's current security situation and one on allegations of human rights violations by Russians accused of abducting Ukrainian children in a bid to weaken Ukrainian resolve, the advisor said. Pence also participated in a commemoration ceremony to honor Ukrainians killed during the defense of Moshun during Russia's offensive and visited the destroyed Romanov Bridge, where he was briefed on the civilian evacuation efforts. Former Ohio House Speaker Larry Householder was sentenced to 20 years in prison on Thursday 
for his role in the largest corruption scandal in state history. The 64-year-old Republican appeared before U.S. District Judge Timothy Black, who meted out the punishment about an hour after he and his wife Tantra arrived at the federal courthouse. Householder had pleaded for mercy ahead of the sentencing, not on behalf of himself but his wife of 40 years, sons and friends. His son, Nathan, and other friends and family were present in the courtroom. Black instead delivered a blistering rebuke, accusing Householder of abusing voters' trust. You were a bully with a lust for power who thought he was better than everyone else, he said. Householder also received one year of probation and showed little emotion before being led out of the courtroom in handcuffs as he was remanded into the custody of U.S. Marshals. Householder and lobbyist Matt Burris, a former chair of the Ohio Republican Party, were both convicted in April of a single racketeering charge each after a six-week trial. Boris is said to be sentenced Friday. Police released video footage on Wednesday of an officer killing a neo-Nazi gunman, quickly ending a mass shooting that left eight people dead and seven others wounded at a Dallas-area shopping mall. The edited five-and-a-half-minute video details the final moments of Mauricio Garcia after he unleashed a rain of bullets from an AR-15 style rifle at the Allen Premium Outlets on May 6. Those killed included three members of a Korean-American family, including a three-year-old child, two young sisters, a security guard, and an engineer from India. Police haven't revealed a motive for the attack. The shooting came in a year that has seen an unprecedented pace of mass killings. The footage from a body camera owned by an Allen police officer starts off with the officer telling two children outside the mall to wear their seat belts and be good. Moments later, the sound of rapid gunfire erupts from the mall. The children and a woman with them run away as the officer radios in the report, grabs his rifle from his car and dashes toward the gunfire, the body camera footage shows. As he runs, the panting officer shouts at people to move and get out. At one point, he tells the dispatcher, I believe we have got a mass shooter, and shouts at the gunman to drop his weapon. I am passing injured people, he adds. The officer continues to run through the outside galleries of the outlet as the sound of gunfire burst continues. About four minutes into the video, the officer opens fire with at least a half dozen shots. An instant later, the officer shouts, drop the gun, and then reports, I have got him down. Another officer then confirms the gunman is dead. The video ends with the two officers standing next to the gunman's body, which is blurred out. The video was released a day after a grand jury cleared the officer of wrongdoing, indicating that the use of force was justified under Texas law, according to a police statement. A Connecticut state lawmaker was attacked as she left a Muslim prayer service and a fellow worshipper chased and held the man until police arrived, authorities said. Representative Mayram Khan was with her sister and her children Wednesday morning outside the Excel Center, an arena in downtown Hertford, where they had attended the service along with about 4,000 other people, marking Eid al Adha the end of the Hajj, the annual pilgrimage by Muslims to Mecca. The man made obscene remarks, grabbed Khan, hit her, and threw her to the ground, said Farhan Maimon, the chair of the Connecticut chapter of the Council on American-Islamic Relations. She suffered minor cuts and bruises. Andrew Desmond of New Britain was detained by another worshipper until police came. He was charged with assault, unlawful restraint, breach of peace and interfering with police. It isn't yet clear whether he knew Khan was a legislature. Police said more charges could be filed. Desmond was being held Thursday while outing arraignment. It was not immediately clear whether he had an attorney to comment on his behalf. Americans 60 and older can get a new RSV vaccine but should discuss it with their doctor first. U.S. health officials recommended Thursday. The newly approved vaccines are expected to be ready in the fall, a time when flu shots and updated COVID-19 shots also will be available. 
Those eligible for the RSV vaccine should talk with their doctor to see if it is right for them. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention said in a statement, the CDC said adults with chronic heart or lung disease, weakened immune systems, and those living in long-term care facilities are at higher risk for the respiratory infection. RSV or respiratory essential virus is a common cause of cold-like symptoms, but it can be dangerous for infants and the elderly. A surge last year filled hospitals with wheezing children. There is no vaccine yet for kids, but one for pregnant women to prevent illness in infants may be coming too, pending approval from the Food and Drug Administration. On Thursday, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, the outgoing CDC director, signed off on a recommendation made last week by an advisory panel of outside experts for a single dose of the vaccines made by Pfizer and GSK. The FDA approved the shots last month for adults 60 and older. The CDC panel initially considered a stronger recommendation that everyone 65 and older get the shot, but they weakened their endorsement after several members had questions about how well it works in the feeblest of patients, whether boosters will be needed and be effective, and the cost. Christine King Ferris, the last living sibling of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., has died. Her niece, the Reverend Bernice King, tweeted that her beloved aunt died Thursday. She was 95. For decades after her brother's assassination in 1968, Ferris worked along with his widow, Coretta Scott King, to preserve and promote his legacy. But unlike her high-profile sister-in-law, Ferris' activism and grief was often behind the scenes. Ferris was born Willie Christine King on September 11, 1927, in Atlanta. She was the first child of the Reverend Martin Luther King Sr. and Alberta Christine Williams King. Ferris helped Coretta Scott King build the King Center and helped to teach Martin Luther King Jr.'s philosophy of nonviolent resistance. For years, her regal, dignified presence was a mainstay at the ecumenical service celebrating her brother's birthday at Ebenezer Baptist Church where her grandfather and father also preached and where Ferris remained a member. The King Center tweeted Thursday that it mourns the loss of Ferris, a founding board member, former vice chair and treasurer, along with a photo of her. Madonna has postponed her career-spanning celebration tour due to what her manager called a serious bacterial infection. Manager Guy Osiri wrote on Instagram Wednesday that the singer had spent several days in an intensive care unit after becoming ill on Saturday. He said the 64-year-old singer is expected to make a full recovery. The tour was set to kick off in Vancouver on July 15. Now it's time for global updates. Canada, Sweden, Ukraine and the United Kingdom have said they intend to refer Iran to the United Nations top court for the 2020 downing of a Ukrainian international airlines flight over Tehran that killed all 176 people on board. In a joint statement, the four countries said on Thursday that the decision to go to the International Court of Justice came after a new agreement on the organization of arbitration was reached with Iran. Citizens and permanent residents of Canada, Sweden, Ukraine and the UK were killed in the crash and the countries formed the so-called International Coordination and Response Group for the victims of flight PS752 to seek accountability. Time is up. We will proceed with taking Iran to the International Court of Justice over the downing of flight PS752, as we promised to the families of the victims. Canadian Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie tweeted on Thursday morning. Together, we will seek the transparency, accountability, and justice families deserve. Impunity is not an option. The Ukrainian International Airlines flight bound for Kiev went down shortly after takeoff from Tehran's Imam Khomeini International Airport on January 8, 2020, at a time of heightened tensions between Iran and the United States. Iran's military had just fired missiles on U.S. forces in Iraq 
after the assassination of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, who was killed in a U.S. strike on Baghdad airport. Iranian officials have said the shooting of the plane was an accident caused by human error in operating a surface-to-air defense system. Thursday's announcement came a day after the ICJ, also known as the World Court, announced that Iran had filed a complaint accusing Canada of violating its international obligations by allowing people to seek civil damages against Tehran. A shooting outside the United States consulate in the port city of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, has left two people dead, a Nepalese security guard and the gunman who initially opened fire. Officials in the U.S. and Saudi Arabia confirmed the incident on Wednesday as investigations continue into the attack. A person in a car stopped near the American consulate building in Jeddah Governorate and got out of it carrying a firearm in his hand. A spokesperson for the Makkah region police said. So, security authorities took the initiative to deal with him as required and the exchange of fire resulted in his death. The Saudi press agency SPA, a state news outlet, reported the death of the security guard, who was part of the consulate's private security. No U.S. citizens were injured in the gunfire, the U.S. State Department said afterwards. France braced for another eruption of urban rioting Thursday night after the deadly police shooting of a 17-year-old with tens of thousands of officers hitting the streets and commuters rushing home before transport services closed down early for safety reasons. Despite government appeals for calm and vows that order would be restored, smoke from cars and garbage set ablaze was already blowing over the streets of the Paris suburb of Nanterre following a peaceful afternoon march in honor of the teen identified only by his first name, Nahil. The police officer accused of pulling the trigger was handed a preliminary charge of voluntary homicide after prosecutor Pascal Prachi said his initial investigation led him to conclude the conditions for the legal use of the weapon were not met. After a morning crisis meeting following violence that injured scores of police and damaged nearly 100 public buildings, Interior Minister Gerald Germanin said the number of police officers would more than quadruple, from 9,000 to 40,000. In the Paris region alone, the number of officers deployed would more than double to 5,000. The professionals of disorder must go home, Germanin said. While there is no need yet to declare a state of emergency, a measure taken to quell weeks of rioting in 2005, he added. The state's response will be extremely firm. He said officers had made more than 180 arrests before Thursday and that there would doubtless be more. Bus and tram services in the Paris area were shutting down before sunset to as a precaution to safeguard transportation workers and passengers, a decision sure to impact thousands of travelers in the French capital and its suburbs. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on Thursday condemned a Quran-burning protest in Sweden, signaling that this would pose another obstacle to the country's bid for NATO membership. Speaking to members of his Justice and Development Party, Erdogan equated those who permitted the crime to those who perpetrated it. Swedish police allowed the protest outside a mosque in central Stockholm, citing freedom of speech after a court overturned a ban on a similar Quran burning. We will eventually teach Western monuments of Habris that insulting Muslims' sacred values is not freedom of thought, Erdogan said. Erdogan implied that Turkey wasn't ready to lift its objections that are holding up Sweden joining NATO. We will put forward our reaction in the strongest possible way until there is a concerted effort to combat the enemies of Islam as well as terrorist organizations. Sweden applied to join NATO last year following Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the military alliance had hoped the road to membership would be smoothed out ahead of a key July 6 summit. Turkey accuses Sweden being too lenient on anti-Islamic demonstrations as well as terrorist organizations operating in Turkey, 
particularly militant Kurdish groups, which have waged a deadly decades-long insurgency. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 15,737.38. The NYSE composite is increased by 120.02 points or 0.77%. Tokyo stock close price is 33,234.14. The Nikkei 225 index is increased by 40.15 points or 0.12%. Shanghai stock close price is 3,182.38. The Shanghai index is decreased by 6.99 points or 0.22%. Hong Kong stock close price is 18,934.36. The Hang Seng index is decreased by 237.69 points or 1.24%. Bombay stock close price is 63,915.42. The Sensex index is increased by 499.39 points or 0.79%. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. Since arriving in United States Major League Baseball six years ago, Domingo German has been anything but perfect. Until now, the New York Yankees right-hander pitched the 24th perfect game in MLB history witnessed tonight, retiring every Oakland batter in an 11-0 victory over the Athletics. It was the first perfect game since Seattle Mariners ace Felix Hernandez 3-1 against the Tampa Bay Rays on August 15, 2012. There were three that season, but none since then until German finished off the first no-hitter in the majors this year. He joined Don Larson, David Wells, and David Cohn as Yankees to pitch perfect games. Larson's game came in Game 5 of the 1956 World Series against the Brooklyn Dodgers, coming off a pair of terrible starts German struck out 9 of 27 hitters against the A's, who have the worst record in the MLB at 21-61. The 30-year-old pitcher had served a 10-game suspension last month after getting ejected from a game in Toronto for using an illegal sticky substance on the mound. He was also banned for 81 games by the MLB earlier in his career over an alleged domestic violence incident. His only previous complete game as a professional came with Double A Trenton in April 2017. The NFL suspended three players indefinitely Thursday for violating the league's gambling policy and a fourth was sidelined for six games. Cornerback Isaiah Rogers Sr., a projected starter for the Indianapolis Colts, and his new teammate Rashad Berry, a backup defensive end, both received indefinite suspensions and were subsequently waived by the team. Rogers, Berry, and free agent Demetrius Taylor, who also received an indefinite suspension, cannot seek reinstatement until after the 2023 season. Taylor bet on NFL games in 2022 and Rogers faced the same accusation. The Colts wasted no time in deciding what to do. Tennessee Titans right tackle Nicholas Petit Freire was suspended for the first six games of the 2023 season for betting on non NFL sports at the team's facility. He is eligible to participate in all off season and preseason activities, including preseason games. Petit Freire and Berry were college teammates at Ohio State. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast.
That's all in today's news. Keep watching Millennium News 24 for latest update. Millennium TV USA and Millennium News 24 network is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IP TV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all types of informative and entertainment program. Thank you.